on September 11th, uh, 2001, I worked 64th floor um, for Morgan Stanley. You know, the day started like any other. Um, when I left my house, I, I left usually around six o'clock in the morning to, to catch the train. I lived in Neptune, New Jersey at the time. And I was married. Um, was I married? Yeah, I was married. And um, we, you know, I did my normal goodbye ritual because my husband was, uh, he worked a little later than I did. Um, and, you know, I took the train and it was funny because I, you know, slept on the way up there. But I always woke up at a certain point and, and I ended up texting my boss right before we were pulling into Newark. And I said, God, is this really what it's all supposed to be about? Like with this commuting five hours a day, all this stuff. And so we kind of had that little conversation. But I, we, I got into the city. I went up to my office. My office was um, a, a, an outside office. In other words, it had a window facing um i was not facing the north tower i was like a corner away from that and i kind of again going with rituals went in i put my bag down i changed my shoes because you know we always wore our sneakers into the city um and i put my food away and as i was it was it's interesting the things by the way that you that stick out in your mind because the one one of the things right then and there was I looked out at the sky and I was like oh my god those are like Simpsons clouds you know from the show the Simpsons at the beginning the, the intro they were just very surreal for some reason very cartoonish um, and I was getting ready for a meeting that I was going to have at um, 8 30 and there was this huge boom you know the building just kind of shook and I was just a little startled, like that was odd. And then I hear somebody go in the, in the corner office, around the corner from me, go, what the hell was that? And I go running into the conference room and I look up at the North Tower, which was of course the first to hit, to be hit. Um, and it was like a ticker tape parade. It's, it's such a weird thing too associate such tragedy with something we normally associate with such joy right um which by the way i think is a huge part of the day sorry get my tissues um because your mind tricks you so i just thought god i mean i literally remember a roll of toilet paper flying out of the air and unraveling on the way down so we all just kind of stood there like the hell and, uh, you know, all of a sudden somebody was started yelling, get the hell out, get the hell out. So we uh, went to the exit and then the guy who was yelling that had actually been there for the 90, was it the 93 bombing? So he kind of knew, like he knew what the role was or what the drill was. Um, when we got to the door, we couldn't get it open, um, which was fine. Apparently it just took some, you know, manhandling i guess um so we got in the hall in in the um stairwell and you'll hear this a lot by the way that we were just walking down very casually very casually like we knew we had a long way to go we were like oh my god we got to walk down 64 flights of stairs um and nobody was it was hot but you know nobody was in any kind of rush and occasionally you saw people stopped because they were like they needed a rest and i can only recall one person on the way down who flipped out and was running down and pushing through everybody and we were all just getting very angry at him for his his uh, sense of panic i have no idea who it was um but we still just kept going down and when i hit the 30th floor there was an announcement that um, a plane had hit the first building. Um, they wanted us to evacuate, um, but if we felt more comfortable staying in the building, it was fine. Um, and it was funny because at that point I thought to myself, God, that's a really, like, it didn't seem like a very professional announcement. It just seemed like somebody had picked it up and started telling us what to do. Um, and so we did, we just kind of kept walking. And by the time 10 floors later, I was getting around the 20th floor, the, um, our building was hit. 
And by the way, I should add that when they said that the first building had been hit by a plane, I mean, again, my mind is creating all sorts of things that just made sense and were a lot more pleasant than what was actually going on. So, um, so in my mind, the, the first plane hitting the building was like a tour plane or something that was just, you know, just, just happened. It was a terrible tragedy. Um, so the building hits now, or the plane now hits our building. Very odd sensation. And in fact, interesting because the other day my town or you know monmouth county just had an earthquake um in the middle of the night and the similar it, it's very similar in feeling it was a very odd sound it was a very odd sensation um you know we all kind of fell to the wall a little bit like what the hell i mean and and as i understand that i don't know if this is true or not that the building was meant to stabilize in fact somebody was yelling that in the hall um so you know that the building is meant to take that kind of um not that kind of impact but to take an impact and kind of shake itself out and rebalance i don't know if that's true <laughs> that's just what i remember hearing um but it was scary but still nobody was panicking it was odd because we still didn't know what was going on and so again my mind creates this story that um either the other building had exploded from the impact of the first plane um or you know oh, this this was just the the effect of what was going on so we kept walking and um i can't remember what floor we were on when we finally saw the light of day um but it was a lobby floor and it was a lobby floor i had never been on before um or i don't i don't think i was on it's weird trying to remember this stuff 20 years later because some of it is very clear and some of it through all the stories you've heard over the years it's kind of like you kind of have trouble like was this my experience or was this what other people were experiencing it gets a little shady after 20 years um but when one of the things that stuck out to me and again just weird weird things that that i remember um was there was a hole there was a huge picture window and, and i mean by picture window i mean a, huge 20 feet 10 feet i have no idea i have no perspective on it but there was a huge like what looked like a cannonball shaped hole toward the bottom of the window and i was like well that's odd you know just i couldn't make sense of it and my mind was trying to and there was nothing there and i'm like okay and we i looked out on the plaza and there is nothing but debris like like ankle deep in my mind again you know it's hard to say what what perception versus reality was but in my mind there was ankle deep debris out there and so confusing and then we proceeded down an escalator um to where i was familiar with entering the building down where the shops were um and i walked out there there was somebody um there was a gentleman standing out there who was visibly distraught and i don't know if he had a disability or if he was just panicked and i and at this point by the way i should say on my way down the stairs i was with my department everybody i knew was there i don't know where they ended up being but i lost them somewhere along the way so by the time i got down to the shops i was by myself like nobody nobody was there i'm not even my department i just didn't see anybody i don't remember seeing anybody except this gentleman i asked him if he needed help and he said no so i kept walking and there was this very i always talk about this very weird cup of coffee that had been spilled on the floor that to this day i always picture it and i go god that's weird that coffee is just spilled in the wrong direction i don't know what that means <laughs> it just was spilled oddly to me and i know this all seems like insignificant stuff but i think these are the things that your mind allows you to glom onto to not you know, see the tragedy. Um, so anyway, I finally got out of the building and they ushered us around what I think was the plaza. At this point, it was very disorienting. Um, and there was this girl out there screaming on her cell phone. Oh my God, a plane hit the building. She was using a lot more expletives than that. And I turned around because I still don't know what's going on. I turned around and I actually said, shut the F up. Like, what did she know? But, you know, what I didn't know was what they knew. 
you know, they had seen it. Um, so eventually, somehow along the way, I did run into other people, not from my department, but from my floor, and we kind of banded together as this little troop, um, and everybody played a role. Like it was, it was kind of, kind of neat to show how how teamwork and leadership works in the sense that when we were in this part of town, one woman took over and said, "Listen, I know that our agency is up on this street over here. Let's go to our ad agency. Um, let's get us safely away." So we did. I mean, we went to this agency. I didn't know who these people were, but they, oh my God, I, I still don't know the names of them. They totally took us in. Um, and it seemed that other people had had that idea also, because it didn't seem like everybody belonged there. Um, there was a, a lot of confusion, understandably. There was one w window from that office where they could see the World Trade Center. And while we were trying to gather ourselves, people started screaming, oh my God, the building, the building fell. So that would be um, uh, South Tower, I think, was, if I recall, was the one that fell first. Um, and I went, ran over to the window and again, mind, I saw the building. I'm like, it's in the fall, it's right there, <laughs> you know? Um, and now meanwhile, now we're trying to make phone calls, right? Um, my i had a pager or a two-way pager at the time i guess it was blackberry and um so i was eventually able to reach my husband um because i was like oh my gosh he doesn't even know this is going on he's still sleeping but of course all the neighbors had kind of like descended on our house to to help him um but now i'm trying to find my family now the the interesting part about my family's story and all this is that my sister also worked for morgan stanley um and she worked eight floors seven or eight floors above me but and she was pregnant um but they were on their anniversary vacation in canada so um you know i attribute that to saving my life i would not have left the area if she was there um but i knew she wasn't so that was cool um, and then my parents were actually flying home from Germany that day and ended up getting grounded in Canada. So there was really no way to really reach anybody. Um, I think I finally ended up calling my grandfather just because and left him this crazy voicemail to say I was okay. Um, and then, then the second building fell. And again, I ran over to the window, but in my mind, those buildings were there you know, when were they not? Um, and we eventually ended up kind of saying, all right, we need to get something to eat because it, we knew we had a long day ahead of us. And we ended up uh, finally saying, let's, we got to start trying to find a way home. So again, my little group headed out and now it was like somebody else knew this other part of town. So we were going to head there to go to the Chelsea Pier. Um, and every part of the way, everybody was just like, let's do our part um, where we can. Like, where can we be the leader here? And eventually we did end up at Chelsea Pier. Um, oh, and the lines were so long. Oh gosh, it was. But I'll tell you that um, the neighbors in that area were amazing because there were people coming down with like trays of water, like trays of cups of water. How can, I mean, it was hot, it was hot. Um, so, you know, it was just, it was very nice and all things considered, considering the panic and considering like what a terrible, terrible situation we were in, everybody was very calm and you had no idea, you, we were hopping on a ferry um, and, and, and the whole idea of the journey home was that, we didn't know like we didn't know how we'd even get home like we had never gone home from chelsea pier and let alone from um uh, i forget where we ended up but you know so anyway we did end up on a ferry and then we had to kind of split up a little more because now each of us were going to different parts of new jersey um so we hopped on a shuttle two of us hopped on a shuttle and that was supposed to take us to hoboken where we were going to hop on a train to Newark, um, but that was a mess. Um, but we did end up, I ended up getting on my, uh, my train was not going to Newark. I had to go to like another stop and then go to Newark and then, and then 
um, get home. Uh, and I do remember seeing a lot of people on, you know, covered in the dust. I would never, I was very fortunate not to have been in the mix of all that. Um, and I, I attribute that to the people who I was with who basically said, we, we're keeping, we're going to keep moving. In fact, even right when we got out of the building, the police officers were shouting, um, go north or go home. Um, and so that's what we did. You know, we, we were doing what we were told and, and we were of the mindset that we were just going to have to keep pushing through. Like no matter how crappy things were, this was how we were surviving. Um, I'm giving you the really shortened version, by the way. <laughs> but um, uh, so I'm finally on the train, um, trying to work out the details with my husband because now I have no idea where you know where we're even going. I'm on my train, but um, and it was devastating sitting on that train because you go went through every stop, and at this point, I have no idea how late it was, but surely it was late enough that these car these parking lots at the train stations should not have been full and yet they were full of so many cars um and you know at every stop they kind of instructed you to um go out a certain exit so finally they said my train was actually not going down to where i needed to go um so we got off in Long Branch, which was the last stop it was making. And I finally understood why they wanted you to go out a certain exit. It was because the hazmat teams were there to kind of like hose you down, <laughs> to ask you questions. Um, so I got to them and, and they said, uh, you know, were you anywhere downtown? And I said, yeah, I, I was downtown. And they said, well, where were you? I said, well, I was in the World Trade Center. And they said, okay. You know, then they're like, they didn't even know what to do with me. They're like, okay, well, um, were you there when the buildings collapsed? And I said, no, I had already exited the area. And he said, well, okay, well, were you there in the building when it was hit? And I said, yeah, come with us, come with us. So they had me like, I had to step in some solution. And then I said, oh, you know, just so you know, cause I had my briefcase with me. I said, these weren't the shoes I was wearing. I changed my shoes. Like I, somewhere along the way, I had the foresight to bring my sneakers with me. <laughs> so I had changed my shoes. They're like, okay, we'll dip those shoes in there too. Um, and so I eventually got home and, you know, my husband said, I, I got to go get your train from the, or your car from the parking lot because I had, wasn't anywhere uh, where my car was. Are you going to be okay? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll be okay. And I turned on the TV. Now, this is the first time in 12 hours that I have a clue what's going on. You know, I haven't seen any of this. I've been on the inside. And quite frankly, I still tell my ex-husband to this day, I would never have traded positions with him. Because had I seen what was going on on the outside and he was on the inside, I think I would have had a nervous breakdown. I don't think I would have been able to handle it. Um, so... I started watching the news. Oh, and that's when I lost it, you know? And my um, father-in-law had called me. He, he had been in the, um, in the army. So he's like, here's what you need to do. He pulls out the old Mr. Rogers quote, right? Look for the helpers. And I said, oh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I said, when we were walking up to Chelsea Pier in like the last couple minutes, this whole parade of fire trucks from New Jersey were coming in. And they all had numbers and everybody was cheering them on like the biggest heroes you could ever come across and you don't know what happened to them um but those are the kind of things that i try to remember to know that you know there were definitely good people out there um when i left the experience i had a lot of trouble sleeping um and a lot of nightmares. Um, and, you know, it takes time. Like, I, I Shelly, I was saying to you when, when we first connected here that sometimes I can tell this and I'm, you know, very cold about it. And sometimes I'm like this. Um, I think anniversaries are very hard 
the 20th is going to be particularly hard. Um, bec not just because they're anniversaries. And I'm so fortunate because I know so many people lost their life that day. I know so many people lost their loved ones. I'm fortunate to be here. I'm fortunate that I didn't personally lose anyone. But it is a very heavy weight to bear. And it is, um, you know, when someone passes away, you personally get to experience that anniversary every year. When the whole world experiences a loss and you all mourn together, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. Um, and there are times when I just, I, I, this is a terrible thing to say, but there are times when I really wish we could forget. Um, because it is heavy. But, um, I do remember, and you know, you've been seeing this a lot in the last week, that New York was the nicest place after, after that. <laughs> like, I, we were like, because I did end up having to go back to the office. Obviously, um, we had a temporary location. And uh, so they, one of the things that Morgan Stanley wanted to make sure, we had, a, we had a memorial at St. Patrick's, but they also wanted to make sure that we got back into the city as quickly as possible. So we could adjust and not be so scared that we didn't come back. Um, so we had a, we had our temporary space. I did, <laughs> I did go back. Um, and it was very nice. It was like, you know, everybody held doors for one another and, you know, you bumped somebody by accident. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so, are you okay? <laughs> um, but going back to the city also brought a lot of hyper hyper vigilance um, to the point that like a weird sound would really have me completely anxious or you know anything out of the norm the train stopped in the tunnel I would send my husband a message that said well I don't think I'm coming home today I think this is it you know or uh, one day I remember walking in and for some reason all the um, storefronts were shuttered because we were working in our, our temporary office was around Times Square. So it was pretty busy no matter when you went. But there was one particular day that I went in and all the storefronts were shuttered. And that just seemed odd to me. And again, I was like, well, this is this is how we go. You know, something is, is going to happen. Um, and that still to this day, I mean, we're talking nearly 20 years later and to this day, there are some times where I'm like, yep, this is it you know, and, and it's a terrible way to live. It's a terrible way to live. I mean, knowing it could always be the last day, right? But, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's challenging and it's, it's never gonna go away. It's, and I always try to say 9-11 didn't define who I am, right? But it was a very defining moment and really changed how I thought about a lot of things. Um, I was very hateful for a while, which people who know me would tell you that's not at all the person I am. Um, and I look back at that now and I'm disgusted by how hateful I was to people because I didn't trust people. So that's gotten better, thankfully. Um, but that, you know, that basically is is how it went down for me and i know my experience wasn't nearly as bad as it was for so many other people who were able to get home that day and so many other people who lost their family members that day do you see life differently now so um the one thing i see a lot differently is that I um, am more appreciative of family um, and balance. Um, I was, and I, I by the way, I, I will say this too. When I worked in the city, as much as I hated the commute, it was a long commute, even longer after we finally moved to our 
second temporary space, which was on um, over by the UN, you know, commuting four to five hours a day is not a good way to live. Um, but I, and I loved the World Trade Center, by the way. Like I love, I had so much pride. When I think about loss on 9-11, losing those buildings was a personal affront to me because to me, I mean, you spent so much time there. It was my home. And I was so proud to say that that was where I worked. In fact, right before I got married, my sister and I took my grandfather there. My grandfather had never been to New York City before. And he was in awe. And we were so proud to like, oh my God, we can share this with you. And, you know, it wasn't you know, a year later that we no longer had that. Um, so my point being, I am always very dedicated to work. I'm always, you know, a go-getter. But I know that I need to shut down now. You know, like, um, I, I know that work is not my life anymore. Um, I, I, if I'm going to work, I'm going to enjoy it. So that's really where a lot of it has changed. I have two kids now, they're teenagers. Um, and especially in this time of COVID, we just, we're figuring it all out. But I do know that their needs have to come before work. Is there anything else you want to add? I have never been back to Ground Zero. I mean, I have had businesses downtown, but I will swiftly walk by um, walk by the memorial. I won't go back. I, a lot of people feel like I need to go back there for closure. Um, it's not closure for me. It would be reopening, and and I do enough of that, you know. And I can memorialize or mourn in my own way. I don't. I don't really feel like I need to go there.